Ashley Foltz here, ready to launch another episode of Tackle Primetime, powered by the NCSA. We are continuing to scout America's top football players by analyzing the best defensive ends in the country. Later, we'll turn to the role of the high school coach and the parent in the recruiting process. Here's Coach and Coach. Great, Ashley. Proud to be sitting here again next to this living legend of the college recruiting world. I could not agree more. And let me tell you something else, Randy. I'm glad to be sitting here, too, because I raised the collective IQ of everyone sitting at this table. Uh -huh. This episode, we are breaking down the top defensive ends in the country, the great edge guys who allow you to get a pass rush on the quarterback without having to blitz. So to lead things off is a great two-way player, our overall number one top recruit in America, Ronald Powell, 6'4", 224 pounds from Rancho Verde High School in Marino Valley, California. Ronald is a quick athletic guy with very good redirect skills, has the characteristics of a big time pass rusher. He doesn't stay blocked, is relentless, and looks to destroy the quarterback. I love that in defensive players. He can run, is athletic, has instincts, and a feel for what's happening in front of him. He's, he does a great job of reading screens, draws, and bootlegs. Instincts, instincts, Randy, so critically important. He is one heck of a player, but right behind Powell is Reggie Wilson, 6'4", 235 pounds, from Haltham High School in Haltham, Texas. That's some raw talent, but he has a great upside. He looks like he'll have his hand on the ground full time at the next level even maybe as a defensive tackle, an athletic, strong, and active player that should be a force, a force, Randy, in a college football uniform. Coach, next is Gabe King, 6'5", 240 pounds, a long-arm athletic big man that may be the best of all in the end. He's got great upside. Looks the part, good get off, can run, redirect, chase, but can get a little bit too high and is a little bit raw right now. But once he fixes all that, he could be done. You know, you know as well as I do, you can coach that. You can't coach, get, get that athleticism though. Corey Lamagne, 6'5", 223 pounds from Hialeah High School in Hialeah, Florida. Very good off the football, great job at redirection, a disruptive force, uses his hands, plays with a great motor, good angles of pursuit, and has great instincts. He's gonna get a little bit bigger, and when he gets bigger, I feel he'll get stronger, and I feel he'll get faster. Next on the list is Garrison Smith, coach 6'3", 240 pounds from Douglas High School, Atlanta, Georgia can be a dominant with his skills. He's a long-armed, athletic, he's got that great get off, he can run, chases the ball really well, and can play with good leverage. Could play inside as well, folks. Wrapping up our top five is William Goldston, 6'7", 250 pounds, from Southeastern High School in the Motor City. He looks like a basketball player, but he plays like a football player. He's a long, lean athlete that can run. He can be physical, he's got long arms, great height, okay? But like a lot of taller guys out of high school, you gotta work a little bit on that pad level. That'll come. Make sure you're always a knee bender and not a waist bender. As always, we wanna leave everyone with some key recruiting insight from two guys who have seen it all in the recruiting process. That's me and you. Okay. Today, we, we haven't wanna... seen it all in a lot of other things, but we've seen it all in the recruiting process. <laughs> We're gonna see a lot more later today. Today, we want to cover the role of parents and the high school coaches in the recruiting process. Oh, Randy, you know, I, I was a former high school football coach, and I have a great deal of respect for high school football coaches, but I don't care who your high school football coach is. Your high school coach cannot get you a scholarship. The only person who can give you a scholarship is a college coach. Also, you can't expect your coach to contact college coaches on your behalf. The average coach, and again, not a criticism, has about five contacts at the very most at the collegiate level. As we explained earlier this season, you need to be in contact with literally 100 plus colleges and universities across the country. Even if a high school coach has connections across the country, bear in mind, he has other student athletes to help as well. You know that coach. The best thing an athlete can do is talk to your coach early on to establish who is available at the school to get some help and advice from through this process. There's no question. But Randy, even more important than a coach's involvement in recruiting is the involvement of the parent. In my time as a recruiting coordinator, I saw less and less parents involved. Each and every year, it was a declining number. The most successful players I ever recruited had strong parental involvement. 
but there is a difference between total control and involvement. That's right, Coach, because a parent can greatly aid a student athlete in this process. Ultimately, it's a student who needs to be calling coaches and building the relationships. Coaches don't recruit parents, so it's extremely important that parents balance assisting their student athlete while still allowing them the space they need to contact coaches themselves. One last thing to know is a parent can be a factor negatively in the process. I've been in recruiting meetings where it was decided not to recruit a prospect because of the concern over a parent. Thanks a lot, guys. That'll wrap things up on this episode. As always, remember to visit Tackle.com and get your Recruit Me sheet over to NCSA.